History repeats itself, first as tragedy, second as farce. God only knows what it does the third time around. Hi folks, my name is Phil and welcome to Grounded, the series which looks at airlines of yesteryear. This episode will take a look at the flying dream that was Citybird. Citybird was founded in August 1996 by two Belgian businessmen, Victor Hassan and Georges Gutelman. Both had histories in the travel industry. Gutelman had founded Trans European Airways, or TEA, which had operated from 1971 until 1990. Following their demise, Gutelman paired up with Hassan to form Euro Belgian Airlines, having taken a chunk of the former TEA's assets from the aircraft to delivery and branding. Euro Belgium was sold to the Virgin Group in the spring of 1996 and was quickly rebranded as Virgin Express. Following their departure from Euro Belgian Airlines, Hassan and Gutelman once again teamed up and launched Citybird. Once again, Victor Hassan's City Hotels Group provided most of the backing and would take a 58% stake in the new venture. Georges Gutelman would of course invest too, and notably, the Belgian flag carrier Sabina also bought itself an 11.2% stake in the airline. Unlike EBA, Citybird had dreams of a long-haul network. Speaking of dreams, the airline's motto was the flying dream, with the airline's call sign being Dream Flight, not to be confused with the Delta Dream Flight over in Disneyland. To make their long-haul dreams come true, the aircraft ferry would have to give the new startup airline a suitable aircraft. The ferry godmother was fresh out of 747s, but was able to provide Citybird with their first aircraft in December 1996. The airline took delivery of a brand new McDonnell Douglas MD-11, a stretched and re-engined version of the DC-10 complete with winglets, new advanced avionics and a two-crew glass cockpit. Despite only being a few years into its production run, the MD-11 was already seen as an out-of-date aircraft. It was entering the market as more fuel-efficient wide-bodied twins were coming online. It of course didn't help that McDonnell Douglas also failed to deliver on their promises of range and fuel efficiency. Several original operators of MD-11s were quick to ditch the trijet in favour of the new Airbus A330 and Boeing 777. This played right into the hands of CityJet, however, with McDonnell Douglas desperate to make sales, Citybird was able to secure the leases at a favourable rate. This was particularly important as, of course, they would be the airline's first aircraft and in their first years, every penny counts. Citybird took delivery of its first MD-11 in December 1996. Bearing the name Albatross, it wore the full striking Citybird livery of a dark green fuselage and tail with a grey belly and billboard Citybird titles. The airline's slogan, The Flying Dream, was also featured on the fuselage, as was the airline's logo, a letter Y stylized to look like a bird in flight. Their first aircraft was used on crew training flights and would also see some passenger service, operating sub-chartered flights for the French airline, Star Europe. This was very handy for Citybird as it gave the new airline some much needed cash before they began their own scheduled operations a few months later. On the 27th of March 1997, Citybird's inaugural flight departed Brussels Airport bound for Mexico City as the flying dream became a reality. Their sole MD-11 would be put to good use, serving both Miami and Orlando alongside Mexico City as Citybird's route network began to grow. Buoyed by their initial success, Citybird wanted to expand further. Two further MD-11s were ordered for delivery the following year, but in the meantime Citybird would turn to World Airways to help them out. World Airways was a specialist charter airline. They operated countless military charters for the US government, with the most notable one being the last airlift flight out of Da Nang, Vietnam. World also specialised in ACMI operations for other passenger and cargo airlines. They also had a growing fleet of MD-11s of their own and were happy to help out Citybird, for a fee of course. World Airways would provide Citybird MD-11 cover from late May through till March 1998, with two aircraft covering, one until late July and the other taking over until the end of the contract the following year. The arrival of a World Airways MD-11 allowed Citybird to add new destinations to its rapidly growing route network with services to Newark, San Francisco, Los Angeles and Las Vegas added. Well, San Francisco was actually Oakland but advertised as the Golden Gate City. 
Newark for New York, San Francisco and Los Angeles were considered by the airline as key destinations, with Citybird spotting a gap in the market for transatlantic travel from Brussels, an area which it had deemed underserved. The airline had hoped that by offering high quality and affordable transatlantic flights, it would poach passengers away from other carriers who found themselves having to be routed through foreign hubs such as Amsterdam, Paris, Frankfurt and London. In the spring of 1998, Citybird established a tour division, Citybird Holidays, which would specialise in package holidays both to and from the USA and Europe. In the United States, they would operate under the brand of Jet Vacations, offering package deals to European destinations via Brussels. The spring of 1998 also saw Citybird take delivery of its first Boeing 767-300 wide-bodied twin jet. Named Falcon, this was the first of two 767s to join the Citybird fleet that year. Falcon was brand new from the Boeing factory, however its sister ship, Harrier, had previously seen brief service with ANSA Australia and Vietnam Airlines, despite just being one year old by that point. Unusually, Harrier wore a white variation on the Citybird theme, and whilst not as colourful as its green counterparts, it still looked smart. 1998 also saw Citybird take delivery of more McDonnell Douglas MD-11s, with two of the type arriving in late March and early April. Line numbers 623 and 624, these were the last passenger carrying MD-11s built. These would not wear the distinctive Citybird livery and would instead sport the colours of Sabina, the Belgian flag carrier. Citybird had made an agreement with Sabina in which they would lease two MD-11s to them and operate them on several long-haul routes. In return, Citybird got both a handsome monthly payout and also a code-share agreement on Sabina's vast short-haul route network. This deal was in the best interests of both airlines, as after all, Sabina did own a small stake in the small carrier, and Citybird desperately needed a short-haul network to feed into its rapidly growing long-haul routes. This is not to say that Citybird did not operate some short-haul routes with its own metal. Some inbound flights from the USA would continue on from Belgium to a destination further into Europe. Citybird did also plan on acquiring its own short-haul fleet, but more on that later. The Sabina MD-11s were primarily used on routes from Brussels to Montreal, Sao Paulo and New York, Newark, with the Newark flight taking over from Citybird. Originally the Sabina MD-11s were to have an unusual configuration. They would have the usual two-class Sabina cabin, however Citybird would also have 50 high-density seats crammed in at the rear of the aircraft. Citybird would then be allowed to sell these seats themselves and thus retain a service to Newark, in a fashion at least. Before the April 15th handover, however, it was decided to scrap the 50-seat plan and instead have access to feeder traffic through Brussels thanks to the code share mentioned earlier. Arguably, a much better deal with Citybird gaining much more traffic than what it would have lost through ceding the Newark route to Sabina. Just a few months later, Sabina reshuffled its fleet and redeployed the MD-11s on routes to Johannesburg and Montreal. Sabina had decided to put its shiny new Airbus A330 and A340 widebodies onto the prestigious route. This reshuffle would have been much more difficult had the original Citybird deal stuck in place. The two 767s would be used on holiday flights, primarily to the Caribbean and Orlando, Florida, as Citybird had gained contracts with several tour operators. Citybird had also looked at expanding services to Latin America, as well as increasing capacity on its Mexican routes, with the airline also in discussion with Aero Mexico regarding a potential code share. Citybird also began operating a 767 between Luxembourg and Newark on behalf of Luxair. It was a short-term contract as Luxair were planning on operating the route with their own metal once they took delivery of their own wide-body jets, but in the end the route wasn't particularly profitable and Luxair pulled the plug. Citybird also operated one of the 767s for German charter airline Condor for two months, once again bringing in a fair amount of much needed revenue for the growing carrier. 1999 was a particularly turbulent year for Citybird with several highs and lows. In April 1999 Citybird began operating flights between Brussels and Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This route was operated by a Citybird 767 in partnership with Lignes Arianas Congoleses LAC, the de facto state airline of the recently renamed Zaire. 
Given Belgium's history of what once was called the Belgian Congo, Sabina had operated on the same route for nearly 65 years. They had even managed to continue operating the route throughout World War II and did not appreciate the new competition. Actually, it was a bit more complicated than that. When Citybird and Sabina formed their partnership, it was contractually obliged to notify Sabina about any plans to compete on existing routes. While the route was a very high yielding one for Sabina, this competition was just the tip of the iceberg. Citybird had signed a deal on two brand new Airbus A300 freighters specifically to operate cargo flights for LAC and Sabina were alleging that Citybird were planning on turning Kinshasa into a hub, allowing them to operate flights across Africa with the help of LAC. The relationship between Citybird and Sabina rapidly deteriorated. Sabina filed complaints with the Belgian authorities and Citybird complained to the media that Sabina's attitude is monopolistic and contrary to free market competition. At the same time, Sabina sold most of its stake in Citybird, causing the latter's share price to drop. Victor Hassan and Citybird responded by accusing Sabina of doing it with malicious intent and was part of Sabina's policy of damaging Citybird. Despite the increasingly bad relationship between the two airlines, Citybird continued to operate the two MD-11s for Sabina, as of course, Sabina were paying handsomely for it. The two brand new Airbus A300 freighters were delivered in July and August respectively, further diversifying the airline's fleet. The two aircraft were whitetails originally destined for Kuwait Airways and were picked up by Citybird to launch their new cargo operation. The two A300s would be used on flights between Brussels and Kinshasa, again in partnership with LAC. Both aircraft would also operate beyond the Congo with regular trips to Ghana, the Ivory Coast, Cameroon and Nigeria, all again operating in partnership with LAC. In fact, Citybird had such a belief in the new cargo operation that they signed a letter of intent with Boeing for a pair of brand new 747-400 freighters. The partnership between Citybird and LAC seems to be growing at a fair clip, with the two penning yet another deal. This time Citybird would operate another passenger route. The airline was to operate a 767 from Lumbayashi to Brussels via Paris, giving Citybird two passenger routes and a dozen cargo routes to and from Africa. Unfortunately, barely a month after the arrival of the Citybird cargo aircraft and before the Lumbayashi flights began, the whole thing went tits up. Lignes Arianas Congolaises terminated their contract with Citybird at the behest of the Congolese government. LAC didn't have its own fleet and as such had set up several contracts with various airlines to operate flights on their behalf, with LAC and the government taking a cut of the profits. Citybird had allegedly overpromised and underdelivered, and as a result the contract was terminated. This was bad news for Citybird as their plans for an African hub now lay in tatters and it was about to get even worse. Luxair decided not to renew their contract with Citybird for the Luxembourg to Newark route, meaning that Citybird had a 767 and two A300 sitting spare with little work on the horizon. Fortunately for Citybird, they did seem to have a knack for drumming up business and the A300s were quickly redeployed on cargo flights across Europe. Citybird was looking at a change in direction. It scaled back its long-haul route network, dropping the unprofitable Los Angeles, San Francisco and Mexico City routes while retaining Miami and Orlando. The cargo division dropped its plans for the 747 and instead ordered two more Airbus A300 freighters, the reason being that they had secured contracts to haul cargo on short hops across Europe and no longer needed the 113 ton capacity for trips to Africa. Citybird also planned to move into the short haul market. The airline signed a deal with NUR Touristic to operate charter flights on their behalf to several European holiday destinations. NUR, or Neckermann und Reisen, were a German tour operator which was owned by CNN Touristic, a holding company formed through the merger of the leisure divisions of Lufthansa and Cardstadt, Neckermann's owner. CNN Touristic did have its own in-house leisure airline, Condor, however, they opted to use Citybird for its Belgian operation rather than expanding Condor across the border. Citybird chose the venerable Boeing 737 family to form the backbone of their short haul fleet, with the airline securing leases on three second-hand 737-400s. The first of these would arrive in December 1999, a one-year-old model which had previously seen service with the financially struggling Istanbul Airlines. Two more would join shortly after. 
These would be deployed en route to various holiday hotspots across the Mediterranean. These narrow-body aircraft were also able to open up new departure points such as Liege and Ostend. With the long-haul route network cut back, it freed up some of Citybird's wide-bodied fleet, allowing them to supplement the 737s by being deployed on high-density leisure routes. Citybird also began looking into setting up an all-business-class operation. Victor Hassan revealed in an interview that he was looking at a new niche in the passenger market. The airline could possibly use Boeing 737s in a low-density, 40-seat business-class configuration on transatlantic flights from Brussels to the United States, with Hassan quoted as saying that by his calculations the flights could be profitable even with a 50% load factor. It would have been likely that Citybird would have used Boeing 737-700s on this operation, however, no orders were placed and no business-class operation began for reasons that would become clear pretty soon. Citybird closed out the millennium by turning a profit for the first time, with the airline making a modest profit of 153 million Belgian francs, a considerable turnaround from a huge loss of 492 million the year before. The new millennium began with a legal battle between Citybird and Sabina over the former's route to the Congo. In April, Citybird lost the legal fight against Sabina when a Belgian court ruled against the airline for operating its scheduled services to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Despite the court ruling that Citybird should have notified Sabina that it was to operate a competing route, the presiding judge was rather fair, ordering the airline to pay just one Belgian franc in damages. A single Boeing 737-300 joined the Citybird short haul fleet in August. This was joined a few months later by a 737-400 which had been subleased from Virgin Express. The Citybird fleet now stood at nine aircraft, one Boeing 737-300, four 737-400s, two Boeing 767s and two MD-11s, not counting the two subleased to Sabina. Looking at further developing their short haul fleet, Citybird placed an order for four Boeing 737-800 next generation aircraft, with the first delivery scheduled for the spring of 2001. In December 2000, Citybird signed an agreement with Air ALM, formerly known as ALM Antillian Airlines, which would see Citybird operating a twice weekly flight between Curaçao and Amsterdam using one of their MD-11s. As impressive as this sounds, Air ALM was on the verge of bankruptcy and had had its previous agreement with the Dutch flag carrier KLM terminated. The contract with Citybird would barely last three months before it too was terminated for lack of payment. There was more doom and gloom for Citybird as it closed out the year 2000 with a heavy loss of 62 million euros and it was only going to get worse as 2001 rolled around. Sabina terminated their wet lease agreement on the two Citybird MD-11s. The Belgian flag carrier had been trying for a while to cancel the agreement, even going as far as taking the matter to court. Interestingly, the court ruling which saw Sabina awarded one Belgian franc in damages also saw Sabina deny permission to terminate the contract without penalty. By 2001, Sabina was frankly on its arse and desperately cutting anything remotely loss-making. Having already relegated the MD-11s to third-tier long-haul routes whose profitability was debatable at the best of times, it was decided to axe these routes and the MD-11s with them. It wasn't just the Sabina ones going either. All five MD-11s would be handed back to the lesser as Citybird had yet another change in direction. Citybird decided to refocus more on short-haul flying and doubling down on charter flying, which was, if you look back at the history of Gutelman and Hassan's previous airline history at Trans-European and later Euro-Belgian, was the one thing they were good at. Yet again, history chose to repeat itself, as Citybird not only refocused on charter flying, but also expanded across borders. In April 2001, Citybird France took to the skies with the airline using a single Boeing 737-400 transferred from the main Citybird fleet. Citybird France would serve typical holiday destinations across the Mediterranean such as Alicante, Parma and Ibiza. April also saw Citybird take delivery of its first Boeing 737-800 with the airline becoming the first airline in Belgium to operate the next generation model of the popular 737. Two more would arrive the following month, giving Citybird a fleet of 11 aircraft, one 737-300, three 737-400s, three 737-800s, two 767s and two Airbus A300 freighters.
There was, of course, an additional 737-400 which had been transferred to City Bird France, leaving the group with 12 aircraft in total. Behind the scenes, City Bird was struggling. Their finances were shocking with the airline deep in the red. City Bird owed Boeing a reported $76 million for handing back its fleet of five MD-11s, and while Sabina paid a high price to terminate their side of the contract, between 24.3 and 33.2 million, it was nigh on impossible for Citibird to stump up at least another $40 million. In July 2001, Citibird filed for bankruptcy protection, which the Belgian courts agreed to, giving the airline some breathing room so that it could restructure. The airline was able to reach an agreement where 200 out of its 600 employees would be laid off, the cuts being amongst the ranks of cabin crew, admin staff and the 767 and A300 pilots. One Boeing 767 was withdrawn with the other one expected to follow close behind. The Seoul 737-300 was also earmarked for withdrawal alongside the 737-400 leased from Virgin Express, with both aircraft set to leave the fleet at the end of the busy summer season. Despite being skinned, the airline planned for the arrival of its fourth 737-800 to arrive later in the year, though this would never come. The long-haul programme was cancelled completely with the airline claiming that, while it has low structural costs, it cannot compete with the fares offered below cost and sometimes financed by state aid, in yet another dig at Sabina. Ironically, Sabina had offered Citybird a token lifeline, wanting to charter their 767. However, Citybird demanded too high of a fee and thus Sabina gave their contract to their in-house charter airline, Sobel Air. Citybird's largest customer, CNN Touristic, had, during the year, changed its name to Thomas Cook AG after acquiring the British Travel Institution. Not wanting to see their charter programme collapse, Thomas Cook set out a rescue plan for Citybird. Thomas Cook agreed in principle to buy Citybird for around $9 million. Thomas Cook were not interested in the cargo division, nor the already outgoing long-haul operations, but were very keen to take over the short-haul operations of the ailing carrier. While Citybird got things in line, Thomas Cook agreed to cover their operating costs in order to keep the airline afloat. Unfortunately, this was September 2001, and we know what comes next. While Citybird's charter operations were largely unaffected by the events of 9-11, the sudden downturn in the aviation sector meant that Citybird was now a much less appealing prospect for Thomas Cook. The loss-making airline was already heavily in debt, and should Thomas Cook throw good money after bad in attempt at saving Citybird, after all, $9 million was a sizable chunk of change just to acquire the debt-ridden airline. Towards the end of September it was clear that Thomas Cook had no desire to acquire Citybird. The troubled carrier got the courts involved and those courts sided with Citybird, ordering that Thomas Cook follow through with the takeover, as the takeover talks were already in the final stages. The Brussels-based Court of Commerce also ruled that Thomas Cook should pay Citybird 25 million Belgian francs for every day that it delays in completing the takeover. The German-owned company of course simply had to wait it out, Citybird would run out of cash soon. Things came to a head on the 27th of September when Thomas Cook chartered aircraft from various airlines to operate their flying programme from Brussels. They believed that Citybird's collapse was imminent and wanted to keep their charter programme operating without disruption. The operation was conducted with some level of secrecy, notifying passengers just a few hours before their flight that it would be with a different airline. Even Citybird employees didn't notice anything amiss until there was a strange lack of passengers at their checking desks. In the end, only one of these flights, operated by the Turkish airline Pegasus, would go ahead before Citybird managed to stop that somewhat sneaky operation. It was just a few days later on the 4th of October 2001 when Citybird was officially declared bankrupt and ceased operations with immediate effect. The flying dream was over. So, what went wrong? Well, there's no single cause for Citybird's demise, rather a list of mistakes which eventually led to the collapse of the airline. Citybird's biggest fault was that it was a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Was it a long-haul scheduled airline, a charter carrier, a short-haul airline, a cargo operator or an ACMI specialist? During its five-year existence, Citybird did all of that and that was its main problem. Away from the aircraft subleasing, Citybird seemed to have a change in direction on an annual basis. Long-haul scheduled carrier, long-haul charter carrier, 
short haul charter carrier and an aborted attempt at being a long haul business class airline. The airline didn't help itself with such a varied fleet. Boeing 737s, 767s, MD-11s and Airbus A300s, all with their own associated spare parts requirements. Such a diverse fleet also led to an increase in crew numbers, particularly amongst the pilot groups who would be limited to certain types and thus increase costs further. While countless other airlines have had equally diverse fleets and managed quite well, Citybird were at a disadvantage as their fleet numbers were relatively low and thus there was no economy of scale. The UK's Monarch Airlines, for example, which in 2001 had a very diverse fleet of Airbus A300, A330, A320, A321, Boeing 757s and a single DC-10, had no problems with having such a diverse fleet. Monarch had an industry-leading maintenance company which, aside from doing work on their own fleet, also had contracts with other airlines to work on their aircraft, which brought in more cash and also offset any costs from having a large spare parts inventory. Citybird didn't have any of this, meaning that their varied fleet was a huge drain on resources. Citybird did have a very lucrative contract with Sabino, with the former operating two MD-11s for the flag carrier. Sabina had overpaid on this contract, so Citybird really did have a good thing going. Arguably, Sabina had propped up Citybird for years through this deal, similar to how they had supported Virgin Express through a similar handsomely paid contract. While Citybird had angered Sabina with their move into Africa thanks to their contract with LAC, Sabina did not retaliate, contrary to what Citybird executives were saying to the press. Sabina did sell a number of its shares in Citybird, however, this had been arranged prior to the LAC debacle. Sabina eventually cancelled the MD-11 contract as well, but this was down to the dire financial state of the Belgian flag carrier. After all, Sabina were paying considerably more than the market rate for these aircraft, and was in the process of being thoroughly shafted by Swissair, but that's a story for another day. Citybird had arguably been propped up by Sabina, and the loss of the lucrative contract was a huge blow to the airline. However, it was Citybird's reaction that sealed their fate. When Sabina terminated the contract, they again paid over the odds with the termination fee, easily covering the fee that the leasing company wanted for the early return of these two aircraft. Citybird instead handed back all five MD-11s and couldn't cover the additional penalty fees. The handing back of the MD-11s coincided with yet another change in direction for the carrier. It was clear to many that the financially struggling Citybird were grasping at straws, trying to see what worked and what didn't in an effort to turn a profit. Thomas Cook AG, which had recently rebranded from CNN Touristic, was interested in acquiring Citybird simply to save their own charter programme. The travel giant even went as far as covering a number of costs to help keep Citybird afloat while it restructured ahead of the proposed takeover. Unfortunately for Citybird, they were in considerable debt and the global downturn in aviation post 9-11 made them a very unattractive takeover target. Although Thomas Cook had agreed to buy Citybird, who could blame them for wanting to walk away? Why spend several million on acquiring an airline that is already struggling to make a profit and heavily in debt at what was the worst time in the history of commercial aviation? Thomas Cook would launch their own Belgian operation in December 2001 with the airline operating from March 2002 until October 2017 when it was wound down and sold to Lufthansa and their Brussels airline subsidiary. What next for Georges Gutelman and Victor Hassan? Well, would you believe that they had a fourth go at running an airline? Birdie Airlines operated flights from Belgium to Africa on behalf of Sabina's successor, SN Brussels Airlines. Birdie operated from April 2002 until October 2004 when they were merged into SNBA. This was Gutelman's fourth and final airline adventure with him passing away in November 2019 aged 80. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, suggestions or criticisms, please do get in touch. If you don't have a YouTube doodah, don't worry. I've got a contact form on my website and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Or is that called X now? I have plenty more episodes in the works, so if you haven't already, why not subscribe to catch them as they land? And as always, thanks for watching.